Hi friends, welcome to today's video. My name's Stephanie and today we're going to be looking at Essie's spring collection called Feel the Fizzle. So big thank you to Beyond Polish for sending me this collection. I am an affiliate with them so I will have my affiliate link and code in the description box if you wanted to pick up either this collection or just any of the individual shades. But as always I will have some comparisons and share my thoughts at the end of the video but for now let's get into the swatches. The first polish is In the Universe, and this is described as a milky, bright, taffy pink with blue undertones. So I wasn't sure how I was going to like this one, honestly, because I normally don't like blue-leaning pinks, but personally, I see this one as kind of an in-between shade, where it's very much towing the line between a pink and a purple. I think a lot of the website photos and swatches make this look a lot more pink than it is, or at least than how I see it. So I did end up really liking it because of that slight purple kind of tint to it. And it also had a great formula. It was perfectly opaque in two coats. So yeah, I ended up just really liking this more than I thought that I would. Next up we have It's High Time, and this one is described as a mid-tone mint green with blue undertones. So this one is definitely one of my favorites from this collection. I just absolutely love these bright turquoise, aqua kind of shades. And I don't really know if I would call this a mint green exactly, but it feels like a little too bright for me, but either way, I still just really, really love it. It had a great formula as well. I found that the first coat was a little bit more opaque than the last polish, but it's not exactly a one coater like some of the previous Essie collections that I swatched. So I still needed two coats, but this is just such a gorgeous shade. Next up we have Don't Burst My Bubble, and this is a periwinkle purple with blue undertones. So I absolutely love periwinkle shades, especially in the springtime. I think they're so soft and pretty. So this is easily another favorite of mine from this collection. I found the formula was also amazing. It was incredibly full coverage and creamy on the first coat, but there were still some light spots here and there. So I definitely think these are just going to benefit off of two coats as opposed to previous one coaters that we've seen from Essie, but it's not really that big of a deal to me. Formula aside, the color is just so stunning. I feel like it's just so incredibly vibrant, more so than it looked in the bottle. The next shade we have is Your Sensational, which is a muted chartreuse yellow with green undertones. So as you probably guessed, this is my least favorite from the collection, at least when it comes to a full Manny, I really wouldn't go for this color, but I think it's still so pretty and bright, so it fits really nicely and complements some of the other shades. Formula-wise, this one was a little bit more streaky on the first coat because it is the lightest shade, but it looked perfectly fine and even for me on two coats, so I doubt that you would need a third, maybe if your nails are longer. But yeah, I'm not crazy about this shade, but I do think it would look cute in a Skittle or in some nail art. Up next we have Ride the Sound Wave, and this is described as a milky sky blue with red undertones. So I personally don't see the red undertones in this one. It reads as just a very true sky blue with a lot of white in it, but not enough white that it's chalky or anything. So aside from the weird description, I think this one is just absolutely beautiful. It is probably the crowd favorite because this is the one that's sold out on Beyond Polish at least, but I'm not surprised by that at all. It is just such a fun, bright color with such an amazing formula, so this is definitely up there for me. And rounding out the collection, we have the namesake, Feel the Fizzle, and this is described as a vibrant light pink polish with multidimensional blue and pink pearls which is a super interesting way to describe a topper. 
<laughs> because that's what this is. So I wanted to layer it over Ride the Sound Wave, and I was kind of underwhelmed with how it looked because you don't really see the pink so much. You see maybe flashes of blue and green. So I thought maybe layering it over my bare nail would let the pink show up a little bit more, but it didn't really do that either. I will say I noticed more of the pink twinkling in real life compared to on camera it just wasn't really picking up that well but once i swatched it over black you could start to see the pink a little bit closer to the edges which sort of makes it look like a duochrome but it's not that either so this was definitely annoying to capture but i still think it's cute so for comparisons, I wanted to show Lost Polaroids from Mooncat next to In the Universe because it was the first color I thought of, but it's just a lot, a lot darker and way more purple. So I thought for closer comparisons, maybe Mooncat's Euphoric would be a little bit more similar, but it's a little bit more pink, which I think ends up looking like the SE website photos, funny enough. And then I also wanted to share it next to Olivav's Rhododendron, which looks pretty spot on in the bottle, but once on the nail, you can see the stark differences between these, where Essie's In the Universe is just the brightest and pretty in between that pink and purple range. Next up for It's High Time, I wanted to quickly show it next to Olive Ab's Aster, but it ended up being a lot more lighter and obviously blue, so not really comparable. But I thought that palm trees might be a little bit more similar, where it's that very true turquoise kind of shade, but it's a little bit darker and slightly more green. I also had to see it next to Orly's Vintage because that is one of my absolute favorite turquoise shades and I thought they were going to be pretty similar but you can see how bright and vibrant Orly is. So I definitely don't have dupes in my collection for this shade but I still really liked seeing them next to these other two because it just looks so minty. Next up for Don't Burst My Bubble, I wanted to quickly show it next to Olive Ave's Lilac, which is another absolute favorite of mine for spring, but it's a lot lighter and more purple. So of course, I had to show this next to Essie's Bikini Sotini, which is another fan favorite. And I was kind of surprised to see how different these are. Bikini Sotini is definitely a lot lighter. And then I thought about Olive Ave's Cornflower, which ended up looking super similar here in the bottle, but that's kind of where the similarities end, because once I swatch them on my nail, you can see how much darker Don't Burst My Bubble dries down, or how it leans a little bit more blurple or periwinkle. If anything, Cornflower and Bikini Sotini are more similar. For your sensational, I actually quickly wanted to show Island Pea's lemon cake next to this one because that was described as having a pastel yellow base, but I was saying it's chartreuse. So here is proof that it is actually chartreuse. <laughs> So for actual color comparisons, I do have Olive Ave Sprout, which is the iconic yellow-leaning green that is just barely passable for me, and it's pretty similar but a lot lighter. And then I also have Olive Ave's Lyra, which is another kind of chartreuse lime kind of shade, but this one is a little bit brighter and darker, and also I think it's not available anymore. So on the nail, you can definitely tell them apart pretty easy. They're not dupes by any means, and I'm just surprised at how much I like the Essie shade. It's so bright. Next for Ride the Sound Wave, I wanted to show this next to Dimension Nails Giant Ant Eater, which I shared recently in my Pisces favorite video because it just is such a beautiful bright sky blue, but definitely very light. And I also wanted to share it next to Mooncat's Sinking Feeling from their Technicolor Dreams collection, which I thought was going to be a little similar, but I forgot just how dark it kind of is for a sky blue. So on the nail, again, these are not dupes but they make such a beautiful gradation and I think these would be so perfect for a Skittle Manny. And lastly, for Feel the Fizzle, I just have Opal from All of Ab to compare it to because it's the only pink-blue type of shimmery topper that I have. 
So even though these are both toppers, the bases are slightly different where it's a little bit more peachy on all of Av's polish compared to the pink on Essie's. But the main difference is just the size of their shimmer where it's a lot more fine in Opal and a lot chunkier in Essie. So that wraps up my swatches and comparisons for Essie's Feel the Fizzle collection. As always, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this release because to nobody's surprise, I absolutely love this one. I think it's just such a cute lineup of shades and kind of unexpected maybe for spring colors. I know a lot of them are very similar to colors I already have in my collection, but the particular tones of these I think were pretty unique where they're just a little bit more elevated than a typical spring pastel. I don't think any of these are dusty or too whitened out. So I think this is such a great collection and I'm just really excited to use these in nail art, but you'll have to let me know your thoughts down below in the comments so we can chat about it. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.